Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and today we are going to discuss about the provisional provincial status of Gilgit Baltistan. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS means paper. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. These are the topics that we are going to cover step by step. Starting with why is it in the news? So a draft legislation has been finalized by Pakistan to encumber and have a legislation upon Gilgit Baltistan as the fifth province, provisional province of Pakistan. So let's know about from the historical background, geographical location and to everything else about Gilgit Baltistan region. Let's begin with what is the actual legislation that is in perspective from the Pakistan's perspective and of course India's stand. Now the Supreme Appellate Court of Gilgit Baltistan according to this legislation may be abolished and the region's election commission is likely to be merged with the election commission of Pakistan because of the provisional provincial status of Gilgit Baltistan. Before this, if we talk about till the year 2009, Gilgit Baltistan was known as northern areas and the importance of Gilgit Baltistan was acknowledged after the 9-11 attacks when Pakistan actually thought that if the trade lines through, through Afghanistan for Pakistan will be prohibited, what will happen? So then they started looking towards Gilgit Baltistan. Now this amendment is known as the 26th Constitutional Amendment Bill. Okay, And we will discuss about the intricacies of this only. Constitution of Pakistan, International Laws and United Nations Resolution, especially those related to a plebiscite on Kashmir, comparative constitution laws and local legislation, these all were taken into account according to the sources in Pakistan when we talk about the current legislation. And of course, the local government of Gilgit Baltistan was also, it was also consulted. And of course, one thing that we need to keep in mind here is that the Pakistan's parliament has said that this particular amendment is independent of the status of Kashmir, the dispute of Kashmir. Also, I mean, it will need the amendment of the Article 1 of the Constitution that relates to the provinces and territories. Establishment of the provincial assembly in the territory will also be there. Okay, moving forward, let's look at the history of Gilgit Baltistan. So, Gilgit Baltistan which was ruled over by the British and the British had taken it on a lease from Maharaja Hari Singh. Under the instrument of accession in the year 1947, when on 26th of October, Maharaja Hari Singh acceded the Muslim majority Kashmir area to India. What happened after that? Mutiny started to take place. In the mutiny, the Gilgit Baltistan scouts who were led by the British William Alexander Brown, the mutinied and after that continued mutiny had taken place in the Skardu, Kargil and Dras areas. Okay, so if we talk about the year 1947, the mutiny was taking place and on the 1st of November 1947, another political outfit known as the Revolutionary Council of Gilgit Baltistan, they celebrated or they declared the independence of Baltistan region. And on 15th of November in the same year, they exceeded those territories of Gilgit Baltistan to Pakistan. Now, in the year 1948, Dras and Kargil were retaken by the Indian Army. But Baltistan, it was exceeded by the Revolutionary Council of Gilgit Pakistan to Pakistan. Whereas Pakistan continued to rule Gilgit Baltistan region under the frontier crimes regulation of British government because British government did have this regulation in place to deal with the regions under tribal, tribal areas. Okay, So if we talk about the frontier, frontier crimes regulation, it continued till the year 1997 and it was repealed only in the year 2018. So, in 1974, when, when 
Pakistan got its constitution in place. It had four provinces. The provinces were of the provinces of Sindh, Punjab, Baluchistan, Khyber Pakhtunwala. And if we talk about Gilgit Baltistan, this region and the POK, illegally Pakistan occupied Kashmir region, these were not taken as provinces because Pakistan thought that it would undermine the issue, the dispute issue in the United Nations, which wanted plebiscite to happen in this region so that the status, the political and geographical status of POK and Kashmir could be resolved. Okay, But now Gilgit Baltistan, this particular region, the illegally occupied region by Pakistan is going to be provided a provisional provincial status. Why am I saying provisional? This is not a final arrangement. This is just provisional. And yet, it is being said that under the pressure of China, Pakistan is doing so. We will talk about that as well. So, Gilgit Baltistan, this region, is extremely strategically important. As you can see, this entire region is supposed to be, according to Pakistan, the provisional provincial, uh, provisional province of Pakistan is extremely important, especially with its relevance to Pakistan and China because of CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. As you can see, the trijunctionality of this region, as if we talk about geographical trijunctionality, it lies between, uh, it lies at the north of Pamir and Hindu Kush and the Himalayas. Hindu Kush, Pamir, Himalaya, Karakuram, this region is extremely important and also it is at the center of those three countries which are unremittingly in embroilments. That means they are, they are in quarrels. I am talking about China, Pakistan and India. So this is of strategic importance, economic importance and of course from the Pakistan's perspective, it is socially and economically very important to China. And if we talk about this region, let's have a look at the important amendments for it. In 1999, Pakistan Supreme Court ruled that the people of Gilgit Baltistan are Pakistani citizens and directed the federal government to start appropriate administrative legislative measures. So, Gilgit Baltistan people were considered Pakistani if we talk about the citizenships and their passport status. But the constitutional protection for the people of this region was not there because if we talk about this region, this is a Shiite region and they are constantly in war with the Sunni majority regions and that is why lots of quarrels happen and lots of terrorism also happen. Militias are unleashed upon this region and this is the prominent, prominent loop, uh, prominent gap or prominent hole that India needs to fill. Then in 2009, the Gilgit Baltistan Empowerment and Self-Governance Order was introduced whereby the northern areas were renamed as Gilgit Baltistan and the region was given province-like status but without representation in the parliament. Now, the importance of this region will be as such that if it is a province now, then it will be elevated and proper parliamentary representation will also be provided. And in 2015, a committee constituted by the federal government proposed giving Gilgit Baltistan the status of a province. And 2018, a new order was introduced which transferred all powers of Gilgit Baltistan Council to its assembly. Impacts will be that it will lead to adequate representation from the provinces on all constitutional bodies. And Moponda Special Economic Zone under CPEC, that is China Pakistan Economic Corridor, will also be devoted to the attention will be devoted because special economic zones are especially very significant for Pakistan as it is battling economic hardships. It needs employment, it needs to boost its economic wheels, propel its economic wheels. So CPEC is of utmost importance to both China and especially more for Pakistan. And then it will lead to, we have already discussed that, the constitutional amendment is in accordance with the international practice of merger of territories. This is according to Pakistan and it will not adversely affect the Kashmir cause in any matter. So, these 
developments are very are to be seen in the light of cpec why because i'll tell you why cpec which is the flagship program of china's belt and road initiative it will link kashgar in the western xinjiang province of china to gwadar port and that is in balochistan as you can see china is a land locked country when it comes to this entire region okay and in order to have an access to the 2500 kilometers away arabian sea it needs a very important port and that is gwadar so it moves from the sea pack is actually a network of railways railways and of course pipelines in order to transfer the energy needs and the economic needs of china to pakistan and then from pakistan to china in order to make or give legal sanctions to whatever projects that are taking place in the cpec area pakistan needs that china is not at all under any ambiguity that this region does not belong to pakistan so that is why it has given this provisional provincial status to make china less of a worrisome country when it comes to having a legal sanction to this area now when pakistan will say that yes this area belongs to us because it is actually the pakistan right now is crowning gilgit baltistan area in order to make china and india understand that this region belongs to them which is illegal in nature so first reason is this second reason that we need to understand here is under cpec only there are many hydropower projects such as the diamer basha dam which is in the gilgit baltistan region on the indus river keep this in mind okay on the indus river so it will provide it has a lot of hydro electricity provisional uh, providing capacity so that is something that we must understand this is under cpec only and this is supposed to be completed by 2028 then also we have the kohala and azad patan projects these two projects are on the river jhelum so you can see not only it is economically significant to pakistan but also economically as well because this region will be provided energy security with the help of these dams provided irrigation securities and an huge amount of population in, in pakistan is dependent on agriculture areas so significance we will discuss one by one first is strategic significance and i am going to discuss it from the perspective of the three countries here the three countries are of course india china and pakistan so i will help you with this map okay so as i said that trijunctionality of this region trijunctionality that means it lies at the trijunction of india china and pakistan strategically it is very important because the hills in gilgit baltistan this gives an access an overlooking access to ladakh to kashmir to important areas that are strategically very important areas for pakistan to fulfill its kashmir dream and for india to not let pakistan fulfill its kashmir dream okay so first is the strategic significance it is straddled with military advantages because an air base here in the gilgit baltistan region will give any country an upper hand and that is what india wants right now especially when it is embroiled with china in the ladakh standoff second is the economic importance economic importance because it is home to the two large glaciers outside the polar areas shachin glacier also lies here so it is also capable of generating 40000 megawatts of hydroelectricity so of course that is why azad patan kohala and of course these dams are being built here the amir basha dam how can we forget the sakshigam agreement between 1960 in 1963 between 
China and Pakistan. A very important agreement under this Shakshkum Valley was gifted to China by Pakistan. And the illegally occupied area, that is from the illegally occupied area. So under Shakshkum also, this is a very interesting fact that China had explicitly and indirectly in, in case if you want to know they have indirectly said that pakistan is not the sovereign authority how because it was written in the agreement that if after the dispute gets resolved whoever the sovereign authority will be of this area whoever not pakistan not india whoever after the resolution of the dispute will be the sovereign authority will have negotiations with China. So here also China never acknowledged this fact but now as the status quo is being changed this might happen. Now one thing that you might and this you might want to know that the Baroness Emma Nicholson who was a reporter to the European Union she has specifically said that Gilgit Baltistan actually belongs to India because in the 1909 letter of Maharaja Hari Singh to Lord Mountbatten, the area of Gilgit Baltistan was there as a part of the Kashmir Riyasat. That means it is a part of integral part of India. So that is something that we need to understand. First is the economic, strategic and economic and plus one more thing that this region will provide China an unparalleled access to the Central Asia region. Central Asia region is straddled with minerals, energy and even Gilgit Baltistan region is straddled with so many minerals, non-metallic as well as metallic energy also. So China, Pakistan and India all are eyeing this area, this area of approximately 18 lakh people. So that is the importance of Gilgit Baltistan. Let's move forward and talk about India's stand, right? India is of course has said time and again that not any authority established by Pakistan will have any say in the illegally occupied area of Kashmir and it is of course rejecting any action and it will continue to reject such actions which are unilateral in nature because Gilgit Baltistan is a region lying in the Kashmir Riyasat according to the Maharaja Hari Singh map which was provided by himself in 1909. So that is something that we need to understand that Gilgit Baltistan, we need to understand the importance of this region, how India should continue its efforts in the United Nations and also with the help of the international fora to make this region actually fall through the legal lines and not changing the status quo unilaterally okay moving forward let's look at conclusion see a very important point to be noted here is that by conferring provincial status on gilgit baltistan pakistan will be strengthening india's long standing argument that islamabad so called support to kashmiri cause is not so much about supporting their right to self determination and independence but to bid the annex annexation of the territory what am I here saying in a layman's term is when Kashmir, the revocation of Article 370 took place, Pakistan time and again said that Kashmiris have the right to self-determination. But they are doing a thing known as annexing Gilgit Baltistan region without conducting plebiscite in that region themselves and they have annexed it to become the fifth province. So this is something to be looked at. Let's look at the question, discuss in detail the strategic significance of Gilgit Baltistan in 150 words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching.